XRP to $67. Really? Okay, guys, we're going to be taking a cheeky look today at XRP and specifically all the fantastic news that's been going on in the space. There's been quite a bit of fantastic news for Ripple and also that of XRP. We're going to take a look at the technical data and see exactly how high we could push XRP under the right circumstances. So as we get into this video, guys, if you do find it useful and informative, do go ahead and hit that like button. We both really do appreciate it. And of course, if you uh, you know want to stay up to date with those new cryptocurrencies, the hidden gems, technical analysis and news, then why not consider becoming a subscriber? By subscribing to the channel, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything we do here. It is free, you'll stay well informed, so why not? Right, Chris, anything else you'd like to add before we jump on down and get into some of this news that's been going on with Ripple and XRP? Yeah, lots of news today. Let us know what price you predict XRP will reach after the SEC lawsuit is all dealt with. Fantastic. All right, let's jump on down and get into it. Let's do it. Okay, for, cool. Like the first thing, guys, um, is Ripple has a new partner with the second largest bank. And um, you know, this is all about real-time payments. So this is a pretty big one. Um, and I'm not going to read the whole entire article, but obviously there is a tweet here that basically our strong momentum in the Middle East continues with Omen's second largest bank. And uh, basically they're joining RippleNet to enhance the cross-border payments experience. Um, this is uh, fantastic news for Ripple, again, expanding on their partnerships. There's some fantastic stuff here. I'm not going to read the entire thing because this is quite a lot of news to get through today. So I'm just kind of going to give you the highlights of what's been going on in this space. So this one here, fantastic news. Again, it's another partnership, um, you know, for um, Ripple and they're expanding their network. Okay. And specifically, if we just copy this out here for a second, it's um, all around uh, from Omen to India, right? So we know exactly what's going on around there. Now, the second piece that we're going to bring up is this one here, right? So this is all about uh, Ripple potentially going public, right? So Ripple very likely um, going public after the SEC case. And this is according to the CEO, Brad Garninghouse. And again, I'm not going to read the entire thing. I'm going to find some snippets uh, and give you the highlights on this one as well. But basically, Ripple's likelihood to go public in the near future is very high at this point. Um, CEO Brad Garninghouse, as stated, um, during an ongoing consensus um, conference. Um, the CEO, however, concluded uh, or conceded um, that it has um, to put the SEC case behind it um, before it can, you know, put a listing out there for going public. Now, while also admitting um, that MoneyGram deal collapse um, was a major blow for the firm. Um, so ultimately, this has got a few pieces of information in here. Um, ultimately, the key takeaways are, you know, likelihood of Ripple going public um, is very, very high. Um, obviously, they're fighting the case and nothing can happen really until the SEC case is put behind us. And obviously, we know if we're following some of the other news articles around Ripple, um, that ultimately, there's uh, a lot of speculation around a potential settlement by the end of the month. I think that's too soon, um, but I would love for a settlement to happen. Um, you know, sooner the better. I still think a settlement is likely. Um, I'm not as optimistic to think that's going to happen by the end of the month, but I do think it's going to be just around the corner. Um, so I do think uh, a settlement's likely. I think the SEC are not trying very hard to win it. I think they put together a very weak case to start with, and they haven't done a very good job at keeping up uh, with uh, with Ripple lawyers. Um, so fantastic stuff happening here in terms of fighting the SEC. Some fantastic things going on with the public side of things. Um, and obviously, they're a bit disappointed on the, the MoneyGram side there. Um, but that's uh, that's piece number two. There's continues the good news, though. Uh, Ripple makes it uh, to CNBC's a Disruptor 50 companies for making waves in crypto regulations. Now, obviously, Ripple have been kind of pioneering the whole piece around, you know, trying to get regulations in the space. And they've done a pretty good job. And obviously then they kind of get slapped with a, uh, you know, a lawsuit via SEC. Obviously you know, there's things going on there. And ultimately they're kind of trying to pave the way for regulations, positive regulations in the space, right? You need clarity after all. And, um, you know, the more money that we want to come in here, the more institutions that we want to kind of bring their money into this space, they need to be comfortable with regulations. They need to know what they're getting into so they don't end up like Ripple, right? And um, so ultimately they've made it onto uh, CNBC's here, um, CNBC's a Disruptor 50 companies here. So that's a, that's a pretty good move there. And you would say proud to be named on the 2021 CNBC's a Disruptor 50 list for the second year in a row. So nothing new, but fantastic stuff also going in the space. And what you're noticing guys is there's a narrative change. Okay, so all of last week it was 
crypto is bad, crypto is going to zero, the bear market's in, um, bad, 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 bad. Now the narrative has switched one week later. Um, and where are we? Well, we've got all this fantastic news. And it still continues because there's another piece here. So Ripple is going after Ethereum in the NFT market with XRP Ledger. And this is what a top exec reveals. So Ripple General Manager Monica Long um, has revealed that the company has taken a step towards reducing gas fees and minting costs for NFTs. She pointed out that uh, Ripple's XRP ledger is up to 120,000 times more efficient than that of the proof of work rivals such as Ethereum, uh, which has been the biggest player in this sector. So ultimately, guys, you know, last week there was lots of stuff going on around Bitcoin's um, energy consumption, the proof of work energy consumption. The NFT thing's been going on for a while in the background where lots of people are saying it's not very environmentally friendly to be minting NFTs. But then again, at the same time, um, we think about minting NFTs. You can do that on plenty of other networks that's not Ethereum, right? And uh, not proof of work. It's just that it happens that, you know, Ethereum has the most number of dApps running on it. It's quite easy to go ahead and find a developer for Ethereum, whereas some of these other chains, maybe that's not so easy to find. I think that's changing in the future. And I think ultimately NFTs will become, you know, a thing uh, that will evolve over time. They will, they're here to stay, in my opinion. And I think ultimately we'll get smarter and faster and more efficient from an energy point of view, as well as a cost point of view um, going forward. And of course, you know, Ethereum moving to 2.0 anyway uh, in the future as well. So I think ultimately this is kind of obvious news. I think a lot of people in the space, lots of um, you know, projects will be looking to NFTs and trying to push that further forward anyway. Um, you can see some fantastic things happening with NFTs on the Cardano ecosystem, even with and without smart contracts. You can do things there. That's pretty cool. Uh, here with the XRP Ledger, you've obviously already got them on things like Harmony One through DaVinci. You've got them as well on um, Zillica's network. So there's plenty of other ways to go ahead and mint NFTs that's not using proof of work like Ethereum. Um, it just so happens that Ethereum has the most number of users. Um, in some regards, I think these are people who basically have been, you know, dabbling around already, utilizing Ethereum, have eth Ether already, and therefore are able to participate. Um, but uh, with the gas fees, with Ethereum currently the way they are, I do feel that we're putting people off potentially, uh, at least new people using Ethereum right now. And their alternatives are cropping up everywhere and they are fantastic. So I'd love to see uh, an NFT platform here on the XRP ledger. That would be absolutely awesome. Uh, and again, you know, a better and more sustainable approach to NFTs. GM of Ripple X um, basically shares why it's possible with the XRP ledger. Um, and again, I'm not going to go into all this article, but this is just another fantastic piece to kind of round off all the fantastic news that's been going on recently with Ripple. Now, of course, we can get into the nitty gritty, which is obviously the charts, right? So here we have XRP to the USDT. This is the daily chart. Binance is the data source. Now, obviously, recently we've had this kind of, uh, I'm going to call it a dip. I don't want to use the word crash, but dip here um, with XRP. It obviously fell quite a bit, and I'm just going to quickly grab my price range here. We're just going to take it from this particular high to this particular low here. It was a 62% here for um, XRP. Now, obviously, we had that peak up top there, and we can see a couple of different things going on with this particular wave to the downside. Now, the main point that I want to point out with XRP at the moment is we've got a good bounce here on that 200 moving average on this daily chart. That seemed to be the area to bounce up from. And then we found this area here is a good area of support. This came in at 79 cent. Um, and, you know, ultimately, I might have been a little bit lower. Yeah, that's actually a little bit lower than that. So I'm just going to pull this down a tad. Um, it's actually there. Okay, so the previous peak over here on the third of um, was that the first of February was also where we actually found a support line here that took us up to the 100 moving average. Okay, so for XRP, we fell down to the 200 moving average. We went up a little bit, found resistance on the 100 moving average, fell down, found support here at 75.5 cent and moved up and then went above and found support on that 100 moving average. So the next challenges here for XRP are going to be found at several different levels. Okay, we obviously do have um, interesting levels just up here. Here, just north of where our current position is and um, so this is another area of resistance that's kind of forming and we can see why that is in a second if i just put that there we can see that actually this was another area that we were hovering around that was major resistance previously but also an area that we came down to and really heavily test as a support line and um, although we did actually fall a little bit lower beforehand now this is an interesting area it comes in at one dollar and seven cent now from here what we're going to do is try to look to push further up um, and obviously on this journey to the upside there's some crucial things that we have to be looking for we want to be pushing past that 618 and um, the 702 and the 786 and like i said in many of our other altcoin uh, videos is we are looking to get that closed candle above the 786 to really help push us up into potentially a fifth wave right and um, so what we're going to do is throw on here 
Fibonacci retracement tool just from that high to that low. And then we can see where we're actually looking uh, in terms of our Fibonacci levels here. So that 618 comes in at $1.30. So that's going to be the first kind of entry point. Um, the 702 here, that comes in at $1.39. And the 786 here is $1.48. Okay, now what I do, uh, at least what I like to do is grab a rectangular box here. And what I do is I tend to go a little bit below the 618 and a little bit above um, the 786. And what this allows me to do is basically pinpoint an approximate area that I want to make sure that we go all the way through. Okay, so if I just go ahead and grab my arrow here, the expectation is that we push all the way through, okay, and then we click, get that closed candle above it, turning this area here into a support line that then allows us to continue to the upside. Failure to kind of do a move like that means that ultimately we're more likely to have more down to more downtime, right? We'll end up going down a little bit further before we have that breakout event. Um, so everything's still up for, for grabs at this point. Bitcoin, I feel, will be the, the, the driver behind this. If Bitcoin has that, that correction, when it gets to its key levels, most likely the altcoins will also end up getting rejected from that area. So right now, the battle is getting past some of these major or, or minor kind of resistance lines on that way up to that 618, the 702 and the 786, and pushing our way through there. So we want to make sure that we have everything lined up for that event, right? We want to have a low relative strength index. We want to make sure that our volumes are nice and low. And we want to be just below that area so that we can really have everything at our advantage. We can have volume growth. We can have relative strength index growth. And hopefully that momentum will help push us through this box here that I've just drawn on. Now, this is, of course, on that really small time scale. What this doesn't necessarily do is actually give us a good picture of the overview of what's actually happening with XRP. Um, so if we can take a look at some of these extensions, they go up there just above the all-time high around $5. Nothing amazing, right? Definitely not that $67 scenario that the thumbnail is talking about or, or our intro, right? Um, but instead, you know, this kind of gives you a bit of a flavor as to where things might likely to go on this shorter time scale on this really micro view. Now, what you end up doing is if you want out and just pull this down a little bit, you can start seeing actually how it has been performing in the past, right? We can see where we were in the crash of um, March 2020 and the rally that we had up here in late November. Uh, and obviously the, the SEC filing that lawsuit really crashed the price back down here, kind of resetting things to a degree. And then obviously the motion that we've had recently to get up here and then Bitcoin's latest correction to this point with the, pulling the entire market down. Now, none of this has bothered me because ultimately I still see the bigger picture. And over here is that bigger picture. Okay, so this yellow line at the top here is the all-time high, which comes in at $3.84. Now, there's several scenarios that uh, actually kind of align with um, with this, right? We can go ahead and put a Fibonacci retracement tool on from the high level, okay? Um, and that put that onto the low level of March, okay? So that would be down here, okay? And what happens here is um, ultimately we end up in that scenario where we can, um, you know, kind of look at... Um, that all-time high area and that low area. And what does that mean? Well, that means that ultimately we have some extension levels that potentially might actually extend uh, and give us a good idea of where things are likely to go for XRP just based on the previous high and that previous low. Okay, so the all-time high and the all-time low for XRP, or not all-time low, but the correction from this all-time high. Okay, so we are talking about that all-time high and the March crash. And what that means is the first extension level, the 1.618, actually comes in at $6.17. So a little bit higher and a little bit further north than that of, um, of what we saw previously, right? Uh, over here in our little view, which was $5.17. So our first extension is already natively higher than that micro view. After that, we are talking about the 2.618 area of the Fibonacci. And this actually shows us a $9.92 area. And then after that, we are talking about the 3.618. That shows us $13.68. And then we get that final extension on the top of the, of the Fibonacci there showing us $16. Um, so this is the, the one that kind of aligns to me or resonates most with me. I kind of feel that we'll end up you know, moving the price um, up towards like uh, approximately twelve fifty. I want to say like $13. It's going to be around this area here in this sweet zone between the 2.618 and the 3.618. I like to be overly cautious and I like to make sure that I don't, um, you know, wait for the top to come in and wait too long. I like to get out pretty early um, knowing that I'm reasonably close to the top, okay? Um, and also like to sell on the way up. I don't like to sell on the way down, obviously. Okay, so for me, that's scenario one. Again, doesn't quite get you to that $67 level, right? 
So instead, what you have to do is you have to look at um, some of these other scenarios where you might start thinking, okay, how do you get to that those higher numbers? And there's a scenario where you can actually take your Fibonacci extension level and take your red area and put that right on top of your previous all-time high. This allows you to show you uh, to show an extension level that would be the absolute kind of uh, amazing. Everything aligns, um, and you know you're shooting for the moon, right? And what this allows you to do is then paste that red level there just at the top. And it would actually then show you some interesting levels. First, the top price target actually comes in at about $25. That's followed by $41, followed by $57, and then tops out at $67. Now, for me, this is a bit of a stretch target. It's possible. We can see that it's possible from the technical data, but it does rely on everything kind of lining up. It means that the lawsuit goes well. Um, there's either a settlement or ripple win. I feel that if the SEC win, we'll get a pump in price, no doubt. I'm a firm believer that the price will go up, but I don't think we'll see a $67 level. And I think this will be because XRP will be deemed as a security and there'll be a few extra hurdles for investors potentially to jump through, at least stateside. But if Ripple were to win, I can definitely see a kind of path up towards that $67 level as there's loads of FOMO, loads of hype around XRP getting clarity and really um, shooting on up there. Even if it is just momentarily, I do see a scenario where it potentially could go up there. And again, it obviously means that it's relisted on all exchanges uh, as well and it is widely adopted by many. Okay, so under all of the right circumstances, there is that possibility of seeing a $67 price target. And of course, there are some things that actually then fundamentally could change the price even above and beyond that, um, which really get you into the crazy numbers. But I do feel those are out of the scope of the bull run, and they're definitely out of scope of the technical data that we have here. They are more in line with saying all the world banks are all of a sudden buying up XRP because they're going to use it as the digital, um, you know, stable coin that's going to be moving everything around the world right um so i think it's a bit out there i don't think we're going to see any of that just yet we do have project plans from the banks we can see all those things but they're more geared up towards 2025 rather than 2021 so if we just look at the technical data where what can we see here we do have an expectation of about you know 13 dollars or so that's kind of in line where my thinking is and of course we then obviously have those scenarios where the, you know ripple win the law case and you know, everything just lines up perfectly and we do go and go absolutely parabolic up towards $67. And then, of course, those um, other scenarios that we spoke about, uh, anything higher than that, I think it's out of the scope of the bull run and potentially would go into, um, you know, 2025. I don't think they're impossible. I think they are more than likely going to happen. And with all the research I've done and Chris has done on XRP, which is very extensive, there's a lot of indicators there, lots of project plans, lots of people who are talking about uh, exactly what Ripple offer um, and all the partnerships that uh, Ripple have around the world, all these corridors and the ODL and the Ripple net, everything that's lining up is more towards 2025. And when that happens, I do see some fantastic numbers rolling in for XRP. Um, but Chris, I think I've covered off everything um, that I wanted to on this video, but is there anything else that you want to uh, leave the guys with? Yeah, I mean, like this is one of the projects that really got me back into crypto, right? I, I know there's there, there's an argument, there's an argument, you know, um, for various different things, and and one of them is the the centralized decentralized argument, and uh, I don't really subscribe to that. I kind of I, I like everything that that Ripple are trying to do in in the space, trying to um, support the the market by getting the the right type of regulation that is required not only for, for ripple to be successful but for the space to be successful so you know um you know for, for me xrp and, and, and ripple what got me back into to crypto after a bit of time away from from the market and um i think you know people should be thankful for the work that they're doing and um be thankful that they were first on the sec's list um to to sort of be uh i guess um taken down this legal avenue i i guess because you know they're a strong team you know you look at the the actual like lawyers and, and stuff that they've got that they are the best of the best right they've literally integrated themselves um as a, as a project as a team um you know um with lots of different partnerships around the world that you know, SBI would be be one to to mention. 
you know, for, for me, all the project plans, they are still all in place. Nothing's really changed. I mean, I, I recently took a look to, to see if any of them have been delayed in any way. It doesn't look like they have. And, um, you, you know, in the UK, for example, you've now got the uh, the CBDC task force as well. So, you know, a sandbox of sorts and, and all sorts of stuff happening in the background. So nothing's really changed from, from the banking side of things. I, I expect big things, but like Nick said, it all aligns to 2025 and a Montreal market in 2030. And these are dates that, you know, we've been talking about since October. Absolutely. Guys, if you found this video on XRP useful, informative, do hit that like button. We both really do appreciate it. And of course, if you happen to be new to the channel and you'd like to stay up to date with, you know, all that technical analysis, new cryptocurrencies, hidden gems and news, then why not become a subscriber? By subscribing, you'll be kept up to date with absolutely everything we do here. And it's free. You'll stay well informed. So why not? With that said, done and out of the way, we hope you have a fantastic day, guys, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Yeah, take care.